In this morning's Business Insight, local aviation attorney Jerry Skinner is no stranger to two things most of us do our best to avoid, plane crashes and taking on world leaders. He's currently suing Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Russian Federation in the European Court of Human Rights. The suit stems from the destruction of Malaysian Airlines Flight 17, which was allegedly shot down in 2014 with a surface-to-air missile, killing all on board. Skinner first got involved with aviation law in 1983 when an Air Canada DC-9 en route from Toronto to Dallas caught fire and landed in Cincinnati. Jerry Skinner joins Business Watch producer Kelly Leon in the studio with more on what it's like to sue a world leader. Jerry and Kelly. Thanks so much. Jerry, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you, Kelly. Let's start with some background on how did you end up with this case in the first place? Well, it was a strange uh, kind of a circuitous route. Um, I work for an Australian law firm, and I had just started to work for them uh, several months before the two incidents involving Malaysia Air 370, the disappearing flight, and MH17, which was shot down over the Ukraine. And there were a lot of Australians on the plane. Mm. And uh, they were sort of promoting my joining their firm, and the phone started to ring, and the next thing you know why we were involved. Hmm. So d describe a bit about prosecuting a case in Russia. That's something I think most of us aren't going to have much well, uh, familiar familiarity with. It is something we're trying to avoid. <laughs> the case is filed actually in Strasbourg, France, okay. in the European Court of Human Rights, which is a European community court for claims between countries or citizens of countries that are part of the European Convention. And uh, one of the requirements is you exhaust remedies in Russia but one of the exceptions is if it's dangerous or would be futile why then you don't have to exhaust the remedy and we have at, we alleged to, when we filed our original application that it was both dangerous and futile the russians have not been cooperative and uh, we were allowed to file the application in france so where do you see it going from here i mean can you talk about that or speculate on that at this I, point i can speculate on it but it is, uh, the European court handles such huge humanitarian issues and it takes a good deal of time and once your application is accepted, they take over. Okay. So they will be um, asking the Russians to produce evidence that is opposed or supposedly answers our questions. We filed an application that was 34 pages long but it had 2,500 pages of evidence attached oh to it. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> It took four and a half months to put that together. Oh my gosh. And uh, when we got it filed, uh, they immediately wrote back and said, we accept your application, which they don't have to. Uh -huh. And we view it as substantially complete. So the next stage will to be asked to ask the Russians for a defense. And that's where we are now. The Russians so far have not been able to provide a defense. Um, I'm biased, but uh, evidence is pretty heavily against the Russians being able to defend this case. They mm -hmm. essentially did the deed. Is this the first time that you've gone after a world leader? No, actually back in, uh, back in the uh, uh, 1990s and in the early 2000s, I uh, sued Muammar Gaddafi in Libya over the Pan Am bombing in wow. 1988. Mm -hmm. And that turned into two and a half months of negotiating with an international terrorist that he hired, paid a million dollars to negotiate with us. So we would get lectured on a regular basis at the negotiating sessions about American arrogance and the fact that we were infidels. And then he would say, okay, now it's time for business. <laughs> <laughs> and, we would, and we would negotiate with him. And also I was involved in the, the uh, pilot suicide on an Egypt Air flight off of Narragansett in the Atlantic Ocean. Mm. And that case ultimately was resolved in the Court of Cassations in Cairo, and I had to appear in court in Cairo, mm -hmm. which was probably the most harrowing one of these experiences I've had, yeah. because most of the people in Cairo were very strong Muslims, and they didn't like having Americans who are not gotcha. in their yeah. highest court arguing against their national airline. Well, and, and you, you talk in the Business Courier article, which Andy Brownfield wrote, right that this kind of work doesn't come without threats. Is no, that right? There's, there's, there's threats. Uh, there are, some of them are implicit, uh, <laughs> some of them are subtle, and some of them are uh, published right out there that say things like, you think you're an attorney, but you're a dead man walking. And uh, 
We, we, we don't have a business address. We have a post office box. Mm -hmm. And we move our office with some frequency just to be secure. Yeah. And uh, the fact that, that most of the information goes through Sydney before it comes to me is good because it's a little misdirection. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we, we, we still have to have an open presence because we do all sorts of business related to aviation. Mm -hmm. And this isn't the only thing we're doing, even though right now it is more or less consuming. Well, fascinating work, Jerry. Thank you for coming in and spending some time with us and um, opening, up, opening us up to your world just a bit. We well, appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Kelly.